Yolanda Shoshana, and I would like to welcome you to another episode of Let's Talk Film, a series where contemporary women get a chance to have their voices heard on the latest film releases. I am filling in today for Stephanie, our regular host who is away on vacation. Today we will be reviewing the delightful British romantic comedy, Hysteria, co-written by Jonah Lisa Dyer, Stephen Dyer, and Howard Gessler, directed by Tanya Wexler. I am standing outside of the Queen Victoria British Pub and Restaurant, located here on 2nd Avenue between 4th and 5th Street in the East Village. This neighborhood offers endless food fare for its local residents to choose from. Here you will find a smorgasbord of international cuisines from around the world, and the Queen Victoria British Pub stands tall among them and its traditional staples such as fish and chips, shepherd's pie, and Anglo-centric craft beers. Let's go inside and get Anglo-fied. Hey, I'm sitting here talking to Randy Weinberger from the Queen Vic Eatery and Pub. And tell us a little bit more about this fabulous place. Sure. We opened about 20 months ago. Oh, okay. And I got my inspiration from the East Enders, which is like a British soap on BBC America. <laughs> okay. And my partner, Alec Jackson, who's from Leeds, um, we were talking about it, and I'm like, you know what, that might be a good idea. Let's open up a British pub and eatery. There aren't too many places like this in the East Village. No. So I said, you know, it might be a good idea. Let's let's start this. Let's do it. So if somebody comes here, what kind of food can they expect to find? Right. We have British menu items, shepherd's pie, chicken pot pie. We have the best fish and chips in the East Village. Okay. Our fish is fresh. We have pollock. We have haddock. It's fresh. Nothing's frozen here. Oh, okay. We make everything fresh here. So what's a chip buddy? Chip buddy is basically french fries, chips, Buttered bread. Divine. Is that like heaven? <laughs> it's a heart attack on a sandwich, but it's good. It's fabulous. So, um, what's one of the more popular nights here? We have Thursday through Saturday is pretty well. Thursday through Saturday. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're, what's the, the, the male to female ratio? Because we're going to want to know. I'd say on the weekends, it's probably half and half. Okay. During the week, I'd say it's 80% male, 20% female. Ladies. And we have, a good, we have a mixed crowd, you know, gay, straight. We have the whole East Village right here. Okay. Uh, happy hour? Is there a happy hour? Happy hour we do 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Wow. We got 375 house drinks all night, all day. Okay. And one more important question. How about, do you play any games here, like soccer, football, any of that? Of course, British pub. What would we do without soccer? Okay. I'm we just, have soccer. Okay. We have all the major soccer games. We show boxing, soccer, baseball, basketball. We have everything. We're not really a sports bar. I do not want to do a sports bar. Okay. Um, Dempsey's across the street has that, you know, but we do as much as we can. Okay. So has the queen been here yet? <laughs> queen hasn't been here yet. No. <laughs> well, depending but, on which queen. I know. <laughs> We've had a few queens here. But. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. Well, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And now let's meet the panelists. Today's panelists are Tina Lee Jones, actress, host, sassy personality. Abby White, singer-songwriter for New York City band Wise Girl from Brooklyn, New York. And last but not least, Gloria Messer, producer-director, Access for All. Today we are discussing British romantic comedy Hysteria, co-written by Jonah Lisa Dyer, Stephen Dyer, and Howard Gensler, directed by Tanya Wexler. From one perspective of the film, uh, it gives a chance to see how far we've come in terms of our attitude towards women having control over their own bodies. On the other hand, it suddenly also feels dramatically relevant to current events, particularly the right wing's attack on women's reproductive rights. Do you have any thoughts or comments about that? Mm. Mm, uh oh, she's stirring her tea. <laughs> well, I I, <laughs> I certainly am pro-choice, mm. and um, I mean, I it's it's a woman's right, you know. That's that's just how I feel about it. It's your body, and um, you know, sometimes the situations, you know, are just it's not possible. You know right. what I mean? Um, so. 
That's how I feel about it. You know, what, what struck me in the film was, is as I'm watching in the credits, too, women were ordering from Sears and Roebuck. And I thought, that is hilarious. Like, the Jolly Molly. <laughs> they didn't have the internet. They didn't have the internet, but it's just interesting that they were getting it from Sears and Roebuck, of all places. And it's like... Now things are still arriving in the brown paper bags and unlabeled because yeah. we don't want anyone to know that they're getting a vibrator. How about it's the same way even with like purchasing tampons? They have secret little secrets, secret packages, and everything. Um, it's yes. a tampon. It's a tampon. Get over it. Now, do you do you think we've come um, further, or you think we're still stuck in a time warp when it comes to some of these issues? I think we've come pretty. Pretty far. Okay. When I was growing up, you still had to be a virgin until you got married. So I think we've cut. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you're feeling like we have a little bit of control over our own bodies, even though some of these Planned Parenthoods are getting, you know, there's less funding possibly, or they're getting shut down. Well, I'm especially frightened with all this these conservative right wingers trying to take away women's rights, trying mm -hmm. to uh, do away with women's <laughs> Right. And it's kind of frightening because we live in a fascist state. Mm. Right. I think we live in such an interesting time because this movie's coming out and every, all the, the mothers are reading The Shades of Grey, and I just think it's a very interesting time, and there's a little bit more discussion about these issues, which I love. Love. This film treats a very serious subject, the treatment of female hysteria in the 19th century with humor, and doesn't miss the chance to point out the absurdities of its treatment. In your opinion, was it as successful in its efforts? Hysteria was absolutely hysterical. <laughs> and there it is. Hilarious. Hilarious. Success. Success. Yes. Thumbs up, everyone. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Definitely. <laughs> so you think it was successful. That's yes. great. I highly agree. More than successful. So what would you say are some of the differences between American and British romantic comedies? Oh. Ooh, I like dry that's... British comedy, okay. which this was, it right. was dry, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and right. American very often is too slapstick. Right, I agree. You? Yeah, I think sometimes American uh, can come off as just more like cheesy. Mm -hmm. Not, not that funny. Right. Cheesy, and the acting is not maybe is not as good. I was just thinking that. Now the um with dry British comedy, the acting was fabulous. Right. It's fabulous. Yeah. But, you know, with the um with slick stick is what it's called. Slapstick. Slapstick. I'm sorry. I like that. Slapstick. Slapstick. <laughs> slapstick. Thinking about sticks. Uh, slapstick. You know, a lot of times the, the acting is not all that great. Mm -hmm. you, know? Mm -hmm. you know, they right. But the um the British, the dry British comedy, you know, you can really see the the brilliance in the acting. Yeah. And it brings you know the comedy through that, and it's awesome. But they had such a great cast: the Maggie yeah. Gyllenhaal, Jonathan Price, who I have always had a mad huge crush on. Call me John. And uh, <laughs> Hugh Dancy. Oh yeah. Just adorable. As soon as he came on the screen, I really didn't care. I was like, if that's my doctor. <laughs> Give me an appointment. I would be there all the time myself. Did you find this film insightful? Definitely. Yeah. Very informative. Mm -hmm. It gave me an insight of how the vibrator came about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we. But what about the, the treatment? That treatment part of what women used to go and do for treatment. Also, I thought the uh, women performers on the table were excellent too, <laughs> especially the very old ones. Yes, who was all just like, "I'm happy to be here." <laughs> I loved it. I think that also for other for people who see the film and they find out what the treatment was for this is very interesting because yeah. it's like, well. Really think about that. That's medical? <laughs> <laughs> they may start prescribing it. Yeah, as a, yeah, prescribed. Your prescribed treatment is you come in and you lay on the table and we can just do this for a while. Right. You should do a great deal for five episodes. Oh, yeah. So, did you like or dislike the film? Loved it. Loved it. It was hilarious. Why? Why'd you like it? I liked it. Well, it, you know, it educated me yes. about how, you know, they came about. What about the love story? The love story, story. story was good too. Oh, 
He's also cute. That's cute. You know, men always yeah. love a woman with some spunk. Yeah. Not a boring woman. Yes. She's gonna lie Which, there. take note, ladies. What about you? I thought it was absolutely uh, hilarious. And yeah, just to see how it actually was invented, the vibrator. Yeah. But how huge it was, yeah. considering it went from... Oh, well, it looked like... It was uh, quite you know, like an electrical tool to like do to um, change a tire or something. <laughs> like, yes. The fat lady was nothing ends until the fat lady. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. She that started amazing. singing. That was a brilliant, brilliant. Such a good little tale. So, of course, Maggie Gyllenhaal was fabulous. As usual. And don't you think it's interesting? It takes a woman sometimes to remind a man that this is what we need, which we still have to do in today's time. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, what were the weaknesses and strengths of the film? I had mentioned music. I found it disturbing. Mm -hmm. It was too loud and it was it detracted. The music? Okay. The music. I didn't notice that. Actually. I actually really loved the music. I thought You're it like gave it. Well, yeah, I'm a musician, but it like made me feel like I was there, you know? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It kind of brought a reminiscent feeling as if I had been, you know, In that alive time. then. So you probably notice music most of the time when you're watching a film. Is that what you're um, to... I do. I try to be aware. I yes. am aware. I, I guess it's just, I can't help it. Of course. No, I'm like, that makes sense for you. Yeah. You're like, oh, what soundtrack I is that? I loved it, though. It really, yeah. like, gave me more of a feeling of being there. Okay. Any weaknesses? Um, you said the romance. Kind yeah, of. well, that... I don't think it was, it was just like a little distracted. I wouldn't even say like a weakness. It was just like a minor, like, just, it was a little, yeah. yeah. Well, there's always got to be a love story in there somewhere. Yeah, right. I agree. I love you. Uh, I didn't find too many weaknesses. It was just an all-around good film uh, and a good little spot of history and good to find out some great info. So, who do you think should see this film, and who do you think will see this film? I think every prude in America should see this film. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot. Maybe that's why there were like so many couples too, because it's it could be like a weird thing to discuss. So girls yeah. are like, oh, come on, bring it, come with me, bring it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that more people were aware of this today. Right. Wills. What do you think? I think a lot of women will see it. A lot of women. Um, and I think it'll be couples. Yeah, that couples. A, a woman will drag her partner to go see it. I think it's healthy if couples see this I do, too. Film. I do, too. It's healthy. I think if they were to promote it as a little bit of porn, too, it might A little bit of porn. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> she has a boy. It's sex sells, if right? they promote it. Right. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I think he, I think Maggie Gyllenhaal fans will see it. I also think um, indie, the indie film people who like indie films will probably yeah, go and see it because you know the British tend to do a decent job at the films. So I think those will be the people who see it. I think everyone should see it. I do too. Young I do too. I especially. I think young girls should see it. Find out a little bit more about how this happened and understand, you know, what it looks like now. Especially yeah. people who are unaware of it. Oh my gosh, so many people are unaware. Maybe they should start showing it in, you know, it's schools. Cool. Absolutely. I think it's a great way to introduce this this topic. Because uh, yeah. when we were growing up, when I was growing up, the sex films were like, oh, no. but this would be cute, interesting, and not too threatening for anyone. Not right. threatening at all. It was done so tasteful. tasteful. We're all about the tasteful. So what was their reaction to the audience around you? Uh, the audience was laughing. They were scared. Anybody, Anybody seem scared and nervous scared. about okay. I didn't know this. Okay. Right. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. My audience wasn't very loud. I mean, they had like a couple of, you know, chuckle moments, you know, but you know, they were quiet. And did you see it in my, my audience was like fist pumping. They were so into it. Were there more women or men in the audience? Um, there were a lot of couples. There were a lot of couples. Even better. Yeah. Uh, baby, we're going to see this yeah. tonight. Yeah. <laughs> That's good too, though. That's a good film. If you're paying attention to what's going on and you're getting into the, the information, that's good. Uh, so, if you weren't on the panel, would you have gone to see the film? Absolutely. Yes, yeah. Absolutely. Why? I heard great things about it. I did too. Great reviews. Right. Someone had seen it before and they raved. About it. Okay. Okay. That's a plus. Absolutely. Okay. If I had known about the storyline, I would have been curious about, you know, about how vibrators came about. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So, how did they come about? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't think I would have. Um, 
just because if I if, if I had known about it, yes, but um, I didn't really know about it before, you know. Or before all this. Right? Yeah, before all this. But I'm very, very glad I got to see it. Well, ladies, we have run out of time, but I'd like to thank you for your fascinating comments and thoughts. It has been a pleasure having you with us here today. I would also like to thank Randy and Alex for allowing us to shoot here at Queen Vic British Pub and Restaurant. Again, today we are discussing the British romantic comedy Hysteria, co-written by Jonah, Lisa Dyer, Stephen Dyer, and Howard Gensler, directed by Tanya Wexler. Be sure and check us out on our website at letstalkfilm.com and now on your mobile as well. Keep watching and keep talking film. See you next time.